I'd like to invite Delaney and Nolan Clements to come and light the Christ candle. Lesson, oh, sorry. O oh, oh, finality, O oh, final light, O oh, luminous one. O oh, end of night, O oh, day's light, without ending, O oh, light of all light. Break forth, O oh, heavenly light, and reign to the ages of ages. Shine forever, and let no more greed or hatred near. Illumine and save all creation. O oh, light we shall see face to face, O oh, radiancy we shall ever bear upon our foreheads. Splendor of love, the world of greed and hatred ending. Join me in the call to worship. Come and see what this night brings. Light to splinter darkness, hope to lift the soul, peace to ring in the changes, grace that resounds for all. Night, the time for birthing, starts to goddess. Angels' voices singing, joining with our song. Come with newfound joy. Join us in the opening hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verses 1, 3, and 4. It's in your red book, page 110. Please rise and body or spirit.
Join me in unison prayer. God of our darkest nights and brightest days, fill us with your hope as we celebrate with joyful hearts the birth of Christ. May familiar words speak to us with a new voice, and may the song of Bethlehem reach into your hearts this night. Light of the world, we ask this in your name. Amen.
And so we begin our lessons and carols. Lesson one is from Isaiah chapter 60, verses one through three, the assurance of light in the darkness. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples, but Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born to us, for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Lesson three is from Luke chapter one, verses 23 or 26 through 33, the birth of Jesus foretold. 
In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Lesson five, a poem. <clears throat> so there we are. So there we are then, all that fuss, bright lights in the sky, angel's wings causing a commotion, and for what? So here we are then, all that effort, spent hill walking to stable door with no more to see than this. Here we are then, can we believe in such a rudimentary scene lies one whose presence should calm this almighty fuss. But here we are then, and tired she looks, and he no less exhausted. Perhaps they weren't expecting visits quite so soon. So now we go then, our visit done, back to the sheepy shrubland and cold night air to share our story there. This lesson is uh, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7, the birth of Jesus. In those days, a, dis a discreet went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This is the first registration and is taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All, all went to, the, to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and to who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place in the guest room. Where is he? Jumped ahead here. Entrusted to your care to nurse and raise this infant one, entrusted to your care, a child for now to protect and hold, entrusted to your care, into your safekeeping for childhood days ahead, entrusted to your care, in joys and deepest sorrows, you will be there, entrusted into your care for now, 
and then in time to come with outstretched arms, he will declare your care entrusted to another. Lesson 5 is from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. The shepherds visit the baby Jesus. Now in that same region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. And Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. Lesson five, poem. So there we are. So there we are then, all that fuss. Bright lights in the sky. Angel wings cause a commotion, and for what? So here we are then, all that effort, spent hill walking, to stable door with no more to see than this. Here we are then, can we believe in such a rudimentary scene lies one whose presence should call this almighty fuss? But here we are then, and tired she looks, and he no less exhausted. Perhaps they weren't expecting so soon. Now we go then, our visit done, in the cold night air to share our story.
Lesson six is from Matthew 2, 1 through 12, the visit of the Magi. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star in the east and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, when the star that had, they had seen in the east, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Where is he? Fast we left the royal presence. Fast we journeyed on. Fast the star that filled the sky moved on before the dawn. Then by its light the child we found. No palace rest for him. And having given all we brought, we left without a sound. Within his mother's arms held tight and blessed by a father's inner sight. This child is safe until he grows, until his love and grace is known. In him, their wealth, their words, their mind are mere nothing now before his light. Power may be found in palaces, in lies and twisted truth, but wisdom's presence needs no show, no pomp, no force for us to know that here beneath the starlit glow, true love lies waiting here below.
What brought you here tonight? I know it probably your cars. But that's not really my question. I think there's something deeper to that question that you might consider. So I invite you to ponder for a moment. What brought you here tonight? What brought Mary and Joseph, the shepherds and the Magi to Bethlehem? A Roman census, angelic appearances, a star in the sky, even Herod's advisors played their part in assembling the tableau in this much loved story. What brought all of them to see Jesus? Was it a mix of events and dreams and interventions? In so many ways, this ancient story is a very ordinary story of a birth far from home in a place where they felt oppressed. But this ordinary story becomes one of wonder. In it, we discover the everyday is in deeply entwined with the divine. Because when they all leave Bethlehem, they go back to doing ordinary things and living their ordinary life. The shepherds return to their flocks. The Magi go back another way that's less traveled. And Mary and Joseph go into exile into Egypt. No one is left in the manger. It's just the same as it was before they arrived, with the cattle lowing and eating straw in the stable. What about those of us who have come here tonight? Do we leave the same people? Does the Christmas story stop in this place and get neatly boxed up and packed away for another year? Or do we sense an invitation to somehow take a step beyond who we are right now? In the midst of our listening and singing, I invite us to pause again for another moment. Are you like the Magi being called to walk a different path, to go home by another way? Are you like Mary and Joseph and Jesus trying to find a safer place to be in the world? Or are you like the shepherds returning home to their flocks who can't forget that they dared heed the guidance, an angel of the angel, and dared to seek out something that would be unexpectedly life-changing? How do you want to live your life this coming year and beyond? So, what brought you here tonight? Yes, you probably came by car. But are you here because of tradition or a longing to belong? Did you come because you have questions and you want answers? Or did you just come to find some comfort in candlelight and carols? Whatever brought you here, you arrive through God's invitation to come and see. May you leave tonight in the light of God's transforming love and grace. Let us pray. In trusting God, we rejoice that you gave the care of your son to Mary and Joseph. We pray for those in our world who have been entrusted with the care of children and who fear for the present and for the future, for their safety, especially those who are fleeing war zones. May they find peace. We recall the worship of the shepherds and magi. We thank you for those who listen for the voices of angels and who open to the message of the star. We pray for those who struggle with faith and those who would love to have faith. We rejoice that your word has come amongst us. We pray for peoples and congregations who witness to the word made flesh. Enable us to be faithful in our worship and in our service. 
that your faith in us finds fulfillment. Forgive us when we welcome Christ in the manger, but fail to see him in the stranger. Open our eyes to welcome him in the homeless and the lonely, in those for whom justice never seems to come, in those oppressed by others and whose hope is lost. Forgive us when we turn away. As we rejoice at the stable door, renew our commitment to travel with the child born in the manger as he challenges your world today. May your word speak into the hearts of this world with hope. In trusting God, be born in our hearts and in your world as we say the prayer Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On this night, we are assured of God's enduring love to break forth into our world, offering hope, peace, joy, and love to all those who are suffering and are cold, lonely, and afraid. On this night, we, we may our gifts feed those who are hungry, house those who are homeless, and offer hope to those who are hopeless. It is with deep gratitude we now accept our offering.
Let us join together in the unison prayer of thanksgiving found in your order of worship. In a world so often surrounded by darkness, we give you our thanks and praise. O love of God, for the gift of Christ born amongst us, challenge us and renew us, we pray. May these gifts be freely given, find their reflection in the lives, fruit, so that your kingdom may come. In Jesus' name we pray. Hear these words by Howard Thurman. I will light the candles this Christmas, candles of joy despite all sadness, candles of hope where despair keeps watch, candles for courage, for fears ever present, candles of peace for tempest-tossed days, Candles of grace to ease heavy burdens. Candles of love that inspires our living. Candles that will burn all year long. On this Christmas Eve, we gather in the darkness of this sacred space. In the warmth of this community, we are not alone. In the quiet of this sanctuary, there is a gentleness in being with one another. In the darkness, we discover the glow of Christ's light and within us a reflection of God's love. As light from the Christ candle is shared with all, know the gift of each candle bears a small flame a diminutive light is a wondrous gift of God's love. As we take up the flame and kindle another's glow, let us take a bit of this starlight with us that sparks hope, peace, and joy, and to spread goodwill in the world.
You may be seated. The Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of humankind, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of God's only Son, full of grace and truth. Let us rise with our lights and sing joy to the world. join me in the benediction. May the grace of God, our star forming creator, with the love of Christ born among us, and the fellowship, the Holy Spirit opening hearts and lives to hope and joy, be with us this night, this Christmas season, and forevermore. Amen. You may blow out your candles.
You may be seated for the postlude. To say thank you to all of you who sang and danced. It was beautiful and red. Thank you.